I'm Sarah Louise Kearney and I'm going to be playing the role of Evie Malone in, in Love and Warcraft. Evie is a very strong-willed, independent gamer girl. Um, her world kind of revolves around the world of Warcraft. Um, she's an English lit major at college. Okay, well, the answer's actually pretty obvious if you think about it. Stop having sex with him. <laughs> Just tell him that he's not doing it for you anymore. I mean, if, if you withhold sex long enough, he's going to break up with you. And his pride is going to stop him from telling people why. She, she thinks she knows herself, but then obviously she's thrown into this situation where the carpet's kind of pulled under from under her. And she's in this situation that she doesn't know how to handle with, which is where you see her kind of more vulnerable side um, about how she tries to figure out her sexuality as an adult. Oh shit, my hands on mine. What's you he doing? You don't want to play with Ryan. No, I want to play with you. Mm, that's nice. Hmm. I think every character in the play has some form of rel relatability to them. You know, you're going to sit in the audience and you're going to look at at least one character and think, oh, I get that. Or you're going to at least know somebody like, oh, that's like so and so. Evie definitely, because I think, especially nowadays with, with media and everything like that, sex is such a massive thing and being naked is such a massive thing and being sexy is, is really big. But, you know, not every girl has that confidence. Not every girl wants to get you know, her tits out and everything, and I think Evie is a really, really good representation of that, of that kind of nervousness and um, lack of confidence in your own body, because you're so confident in your own mind that sometimes that balance isn't quite there. So yeah, I think a lot of girls will relate to Evie. Well, there's Kitty, who's her best friend and roommate, who is the polar opposite of Evie. You know, she's sex mad and really confident and really beautiful and you know, knows how to portray herself as a confident young woman. So she's great fun. Um, again, I think girls, other girls are going to relate to Kitty just as much as they relate to Evie, that sex crazed, I want to fuck everything that, that I can get my hands on, whereas Evie's not. Um, Raoul, who is Evie's love interest in the play, is really relatable, of being that guy who wants to be a gentleman, who wants to be, you know, really thoughtful of a girl's respect, but, you know, really wants to get his hole, essentially. <laughs> I've told you, it's been really hard for me ever since Ryan kicked me out of the guild. I've had to pay for my own repairs, figure out new strats for the race, I've had to hook up with noobs who keep screwing up, and I've had to trade my dragon for gold. But that's not real. It is to me. Well, that's kind of weird. It's not that weird. Ryan, who's also in the play, who is Evie's online boyfriend as such, bit of a dick. <laughs> you know, as a gamer guy and doesn't really understand how important his relationship with Evie is to her. So, you know, when when an argument happens, he, he he's more upset about the, the impact that it has on his gaming and World of Warcraft. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting dynamic to see, because I'm sure it's a relationship that a lot of people have seen or have been in themselves. That's a white. Run back. Ryan, Ryan, listen, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. What? Just take that, and that, and that, yes! <laughs> Oh, that's great. Keep doing that. Are you feeling me, baby? Do it. Yeah! Power. Nip it! Focus fire! <sighs> and that's it. It's dead. And then you've got all the other little bit parts. Um, Charlotte, who's probably one of my favourite bit parts, who is a Christian woman about to get married and on her wedding night plans to lose her virginity with her husband. And that's just a really beautiful thing to see and it's really sweet having that conversation with Evie. Um, and then there's the hairdresser, which is just hilarious, um, talking about dick all the time. Um, we've all been there, where <laughs> your hairdresser shares just a little bit too much and you're stuck there. So yeah, no, there's loads of great characters in the play and I reckon it's going to be something that everyone's going to take something away from. It has to be the World of Warcraft scene right uh, towards the end. So there's a scene that takes place within the game. Um, that's just going to be so hilarious. <laughs> We're all going to be playing our own avatars, so it's expressionless and it's, it's game, gaming avatar movement and breathing and, you know, fight movements and I'm really, really excited to see how that one turns out. It's going to be great fun. I think the biggest selling point is how modern it is and how much... The writer is very, very clever and she has a very, very strong point she puts across, but she doesn't scream it in your face. She's very, very intelligent with her characters, I think. And she's done it in such a subtle way that when the play finishes, you sit there and you're like, oh wow, okay, that's what that was about and that's great. And such a modern thing with, you know, the popularity of internet dating and how 
technology controls our lives so much now and that we kind of don't realise that because we've grown into that, especially my generation, you know, started with no mobile phones and now can't get me off my phone kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, the playwright's very, very intelligent. I'm not surprised that she's won an award for this.